in comparison to the casting classes with their never-ending list of powers and special abilities, the martial classes may seem a bit humdrum. But I'm here to tell you that there are lies, damn lies, and people who tell you that all martial classes are good for is waving pointy things around. And to prove it, I've got four fighter archetypes that will make you the superhero or villain of your next Pathfinder 1E adventure. But before we begin, if you're in need of a Pathfinder 1E adventure, have a look at Sorceress the Dietrich House. Designed for a party of four level 3 characters, this adventure has sinister mysteries, unsolved crimes, and a haunted house with lurking terrors to challenge your players. As well as unexpected treasures courtesy of the dynamic and thematic loot system, which will make for unique and compelling rewards for those willing to brave the depths of the Dietrich House. Available right now on DriveThruRPG. Now, let's dig in to our fighter archetypes, beginning with the Titan Fighter. This archetype allows you to wield oversized weapons and live your anime protagonist dream. But before I can explain exactly how this archetype works, let's examine what wielding a weapon that isn't meant for a creature of your size category actually means in gameplay terms. A weapon's size category refers to the size of its intended wielder. Trying to wield a weapon not sized for you imposes a cumulative minus two penalty for each size category different from yours. As an example, a small halfling trying to wield a large ogre's dagger would take a minus four when attempting to use the dagger. Also, as you increase in size category, the weapon's designation changes. Light weapons become one-handed weapons, and one-handed weapons become two-handed weapons. So again, as an example, that small halfling is wielding that ogre's dagger as a two-handed melee weapon. And this is because of the size difference. There is also a very, very important caveat. If, because of size difference, the weapon would be pushed out of the normal categorization, it cannot be wielded at all. Let me give you another example. A tiny category longsword is not usable by a medium category creature because it would fall below the light weapon category. So, with that important rule in mind, at first level, the Titan Fighter gets Great Weapon Wielder. This allows you to wield a two-handed weapon that is one size category larger than yourself. You take a minus two penalty on attacks. That's a minus four total if you're a medium category creature. Great Weapon Wielder replaces your first level bonus feat. At third level, you get Incredible Heft. The penalty for using oversized two-handed weapons is reduced by one. Then at seventh, it's reduced by another one, and by one more for every four levels thereafter. The minus four will be gone altogether by the time you hit 15th level. This ability replaces armor training. Finally, at fifth level, you'll get Unstoppable Movement. You get a plus one, to combat maneuver bonus and combat maneuver defense when wielding weapons one size category larger than yourself. At ninth level, this bonus increases by plus one and an additional plus one for every four levels thereafter. Also, you can attempt to bull rush, drag, overrun, reposition, and trip creatures two size category larger than yourself. To finish off Titan Fighter, I'd like to talk about weapon selection. Because this class is all about wielding big two-handed weapons, you're going to want to limit your selection to Greatsword, Earthbreaker, and Great Axe. Greatsword and Earthbreaker, if they're of your size category, do 2d6 of damage, whereas the Great Axe does 1d12. However, at large category, Earthbreaker, Greatsword, and Great Axe all deal 3d6 worth of damage. But, thanks to magical enchantments, you can go one step further. If you make your Greatsword, Great Axe, or Earthbreaker impacting in its large category, that means it will hit as if it was huge category. 
Then it would deal 4 d6 of damage on every hit. Now, on to our next fighter archetype. It's Dragon Air Scion. Think of this as the fighter equivalent to the Dragon Lineage Blood Rager. When you take the Dragon Air Scion archetype, it changes some of your fighter class skills. You gain Knowledge Arcane and use Magic Device. And you lose Handle Animal and Ride. Now, like any of the dragon-themed classes in Pathfinder, you'll have a very important choice to make at first level. What is your dragon bloodline? This will affect your damage resistances and damage types. If you want fire, go with red or gold. If you want electric, go with blue or bronze. If you want acid, go green, black, or copper. And if you want cold go with white or silver. Also, at first level, you will gain Arcane Strike, even if you don't qualify for the feat. This allows you to, as a swift action for one round, your weapons deal plus one damage and are treated as magic for the purpose of overcoming DR. Every five levels, this damage bonus will increase by plus one. This replaces your level one bonus feat. Next, at level 2, you get Frightful Might. This gives you a plus 1 bonus to Intimidate checks to demoralize enemies. This increases to plus 2 at 6th level, and an additional plus 1 for every 4 levels thereafter. It replaces Bravery, because apparently if you're scary enough, you don't need to be brave. At 3rd level, you will get Draconic Defense. This gives you a plus one natural armor bonus and resistance five versus your energy type. At seventh level, this will increase to a plus two natural armor bonus and 10 resistance to your energy type. At 13th level, you will get a plus three natural armor bonus and resistance 20 to your energy type. This ability replaces armor training one, two, and three. At 4th level, you'll get a very important ability called Draconic Strike. When you deal damage with an attack that has been modified by Arcane Strike, you deal an additional 1d4 of damage of your energy type. This replaces your 4th level bonus feat. Next, at 6th level, you get Draconic Presence. This gives you Dazzling Display as a bonus feat. And you get some modifications for it. One. You don't need a weapon, and you can use Dazzling Display as a standard action instead of a full round action. Your Dazzling Display will demoralize all enemies within 30 feet if they fail their save against it. The enemy must be able to see you to be impressed by your dragony awesomeness. Draconic Presence replaces your 6th level bonus feat. Next, at 15th level, you get Wings. You can grow wings as a standard action, and you get a fly speed of 60 feet with average maneuverability. And the best part is, there's no time limit. Fly as long as you please. This replaces Armor Training 4 and Armor Mastery. Finally, at 20th level, you get your capstone ability, Might of Worms. This gives you immunity to paralysis, sleep, and the energy type associated with your bloodline. Also, you get blind sense out to 60 feet. This replaces weapon mastery. Now, let's take a second and talk about the stats for the Dragon Air Scion. More so than a lot of other fighter builds, this archetype can get a lot out of charisma especially with your bonuses to abilities and Intimidate. In fact, it might be worth taking feats like Intimidating Prowess to make you even more impressive to the enemy. Another ability score that I think benefits this archetype a lot is Dexterity. With Arcane Strike and Draconic Strike, you can get a lot out of two-weapon fighting. So, with two light weapons, such as Gladius or Wakazashi, that deal 1d6 of damage, add to it the 1d4 of energy damage from Draconic Strike, and you're basically swinging around two bastard swords without the possibility of rolling ones on the damage die. 
So, with that in mind, when you start adding on feats like two-weapon fighting, which gives you an additional attack, improved two-weapon fighting, and greater two-weapon fighting, which give you even more offhand attacks, in addition to the attacks that you gain as you increase your base attack bonus, that's potentially a lot of damage being thrown onto targets around you. You could even get rending from the two-weapon rending feat, and you'll be able to cut your enemies down to size in no time. Moving on to our next fighter archetype, we have the Eldritch Guardian. This is a fighter with a familiar. So your first Eldritch Guardian ability is familiar, and you will be treating your fighter level as your wizard level for the purposes of this ability. You'll also have a couple changes to your skills. You gain Perception, Spellcraft, and Use Magic Device as class skills, and you lose Intimidate, Ride, and Swim. At second level as an Eldritch Guardian, you get Shared Training. When your familiar can see and hear you, it can use any combat feat you know. However, some feats may not be applicable because the familiar isn't physically capable of performing that action. This replaces your second level bonus feat. Also, at second level, you'll get Steel Will. This gives you a plus one bonus on will saves versus fear and mind effects. This bonus increases by plus one for every four levels beyond second. This replaces bravery. Now that you know the abilities that will be altered and added by the Eldritch Guardian archetype, let's talk about some different archetypes, namely the archetypes for your familiar, which can give you a lot of exciting options. The first archetype you should consider for your familiar is the Emissary. This gives you a divinely powered familiar with some cool support options. Also, this one comes with a restriction, you must worship a single deity. So, with that done, your Emissary Familiar gets a couple of alterations to its skills. It gets Heal, Knowledge Religion, and Sense Motive as class skills. Also, at first level, your Emissary will get Divine Guidance. This allows it to cast the Guidance Cantrip at will. This replaces Alertness. Your Emissary will also get Share Will. If you or the Emissary fail a will save, the other can attempt to roll for the save as well. If the other one succeeds, you both succeed. However, if you both fail, you and the Emissary suffer the effect that you had to save against. This replaces Share Spell. Finally, at third level, your Emissary will get Domain Influence. This gives your emissary the ability to use a cleric domain power normally usable a number of times per day equal to 3 plus wisdom modifier. However, your emissary can use this ability only one time per day. Here is a quick list of some potentially useful domain powers. From the Azata subdomain, you have Elysium's Call. On a touch, you can reroll failed saves against spell-like abilities from the Enchantment Charm and Enchantment Compulsion Schools. You also get a plus two sacred bonus to saves, a plus two sacred bonus versus grapple checks, and the ability to ignore five feet of difficult terrain per round. Another good option is the War Domain. This gives the Battle Rage power. This gives you a bonus to melee damage for one round. There's also the Tactics Subdomain of War. This allows your emissary to, when you roll initiative, grant you or an ally within 30 feet the ability to roll twice and take the better result. Finally, you could take Strength Surge from the Strength Domain. This gives you an enhancement bonus to melee attacks and strength-based skill checks for one round. Now, if you're interested in a familiar that's a little more dark and disturbing, you could take Parasite. Your parasitic familiar gets a couple of nasty abilities, starting with Infest. As a full round action, the parasite can burrow inside a helpless creature, dealing 1d6 points of constitution damage. 
the parasite will then affix to the creature's spine or brain or nervous system. The parasite can see through the host's eyes and use the host's senses. I will point out that the host is still alive when this is happening. And if the parasite's entry hole isn't blindingly obvious, pro tip, go through the back. The victim must succeed at a heal check or a sense motive check to notice that it's got a parasite inside of it. This is opposed by the parasite's bluff check. Now, the parasite can be removed with a successful heal check. This is opposed by the parasite's stealth check or a successful break enchantment spell. Uh, this ability replaces your familiar's evasion. Next, we get into the reason why you take a parasite familiar, the puppeteer ability. The parasite can take control of its host's behavior. At third level, this functions as suggestion. It can do this one time per day. At seventh level, this functions as dominate person, again, one time per day. But because the duration of dominate person is measured in days, your victim is going to be under your command. And at 15th level, this functions as Dominate Monster, which really gives you so many options for the kind of things that your little friend can control for you. This will cost your familiar. It's Deliver Touch Spell ability, Speak with Animals, Spell Resistance, and Scry on Familiar. The final familiar archetype I believe the Eldritch Guardian really benefits from is the Protector. This is great for defensive fighters. First, your familiar will get the ability Loyal Bodyguard. This grants your protector bodyguard and combat reflexes as bonus feats. Also, if it's sharing your square, it can use the Aid Another Action to improve your AC even if it doesn't threaten the enemy. This replaces Improved Evasion. Next, at 5th level, your protector will get Shield Master. If you and your protector are touching, and one of you takes damage, the damage can be split evenly between the two of you. This replaces Deliver Touch spells and Speak with Animals of its own kind. Finally, at 11th level, your protector will get Able Defender. This gives your protector the In Harm's Way feat as a bonus feat. This allows it to, when using the Aid Another action, to improve your AC, if by chance a hit should actually make it through, it can take the hit for you. Also, very importantly, your protector's HP is equal to your HP. This effectively doubles the size of your health pool, considering you two can share damage. This replaces your familiar's spell resistance. I'd like to conclude this examination of the Eldritch Guardian by talking about your improved familiar options. You have an incredible number of cool familiars to choose from, and here are a few of my favorites. First up, the Lyricine Azada. This would be for the Emissary. It adds a huge number of cool spell-like abilities on top of the Cleric stuff gained and it's great to have a Cure Light Wounds on hand when you need it. Another good one is the Brain Mole, for Parasite, obviously. This nasty little critter has the ability to brain drain a creature that it's grappled to. This does psychic damage and causes spellcasters to lose prepared spells or spell slots if they get damaged by it. Also, it can burrow through rock and other materials that are much easier to burrow through, if you know what I mean. Another great one is the Cassian Angel for Protector. It's literally a helmet with wings. You can probably just wear it, so you're constantly in contact with it and able to share damage between the two of you. It also has an ability called Lesser Protective Aura, which makes it harder for evil creatures to hit. Finally, an interesting take on the Parasite would be the Imp Familiar. You could easily reflavor the body horror of the normal parasite to more about possession, and it can probably use its spell like abilities through its new host. Now, on to our final fighter archetype, the Mutagen Warrior. This allows you to augment your already impressive fighter skills with a little alchemical assistance. 
At third level, you get Mutagen. This functions as the alchemist ability. When you drink your Mutagen, you get a plus four alchemical bonus to one physical ability score and a minus two alchemic penalty to one mental ability score, as well as a nice plus two natural armor bonus. The Mutagen lasts for 10 minutes per alchemist level. This ability replaces armor training one. Then at 7th level, you get Mutagen Discoveries. This gives you access to a bunch of Alchemist Discoveries that can be very useful for you. In addition to the one you get at 7th level, you get an additional Mutagen Discovery every 4 levels thereafter. Here are some of your choices. Feral Mutagen. This gives you 2 Claws and a Bite as primary natural attacks. That means you make them at your full base attack bonus. You also get a plus two competency bonus to intimidate checks. Next, greater mutagen. This intensifies your mutagen, meaning that it provides a plus six and a plus four alchemical bonus to two different physical ability scores and two minus two alchemical penalties to their associated mental ability scores as well as a plus four natural armor bonus. You can take this even further with Grand Mutagen. This makes your mutagen provide a plus eight, plus six, and plus four alchemical bonus to your three physical ability scores, and a minus two penalty to all of your mental ability scores, as well as a whopping plus six natural armor bonus. Next, if you're interested in the dark arts of preservation, you could try Preserved Organs. This gives you a 25% mischance chance when you're hit by a critical attack or sneak attack to simply ignore the damage. You can take this discovery multiple times, and the bonuses stack, going from 25 to 50 and 50 to 75% chance of simply not being critically hit because you've taken care of your organs. Way to think ahead. You might also consider Ragdoll Mutagen. When under the effect of your Mutagen, you gain a bonus equal to your class level on Escape Artist checks, and you can squeeze through areas that are one size category smaller than you would normally be able to fit through. You can also make a Reflex save, DC equal to 15 plus 1 for every 10 feet you fall, to take half damage from falling. Then at 10th level, your fall damage is automatically non-lethal, and you can squeeze through areas as if you were two size categories smaller than you actually are. Next, a very good option is Spontaneous Healing. As a free action once per round, you can heal 5 HP as if you had the fast healing ability. You can heal 5 HP this way for every two alchemist levels, Mutagen Warrior for you, that you possess. Now, if you fall unconscious because of hit point loss, you automatically regenerate until you either recover or you're out of healing. Finally, one of my all-time favorite alchemist discoveries, Wings. This gives you a fly speed for a number of minutes equal to your caster level, again, mutagen warrior level for you. You can activate this ability as a standard action. Thank you very much for watching Four Super Fighter Archetypes for Pathfinder 1E from D6 Damage. Now, if you're interested in books and accessories for Pathfinder 1E, 2E, or D&D, check out Noble Knight Games. There's an affiliate link down in the description. Also, if you're interested in a haunted house adventure, check out Sorceress the Dietrich House, available right now on DriveThruRPG. Also, if you're interested in more strategy guides and reviews for Pathfinder 1E, check out D6 Damage on BitChute or YouTube. Finally, if you'd like to take your game further, join the D6 Damage Discord. We have fantastic discussions about all aspects of the game, role-playing, character builds, and much, much more. The link is down in the description. Oh.